Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this problem, we're going to be analyzing this picture that they give us in the book. And for part A, they want us to draw a data table of all of the information from the picture. They tell us in the problem that they're taking two frames every second. So another way of saying that is that every snapshot, every time we see a new ball, that is half of a second because two frames for a whole second, one frame for half of a second. So when we make our table, we're gonna start at time zero. We're gonna start at zero. So we have zero and then half of a second, one, one and a half. Okay, so now that we have all of the times, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now we have a picture or a spot for every single ball and we need to figure out what the position was for each of these. So at time zero over here at negative four meters, that is the first one, so negative four meters. At a half of a second, it's at negative two. One second is zero. And then the next one, I'm using the same numbers as the book, so I know these seem a little bit kind of random here. Um, I agree, <laughs> they seem a little random, but it's just I wanna stay consistent, so there's no concern as far as getting the wrong answer. So for one and a half seconds, we have 1.8 meters, three, and then four for two and a half seconds. At three seconds, we have five, three and a half, we have six and seven. For part B, they want us to graph this. So let me create a little graph here. All right, so here is the graph that I created for our data table. So now we just need to plot these points. So at time zero, we have negative four. And then at half of a second, we have negative two. One second is zero. All right, and so for part B, this is what the graph should look like for all of the data points as the ball is rolling with the snapshots. So now for each of the other parts, they just ask us what the change in position is and then what the change in velocity is for different sections. So for part C and D, they want us to figure out what the ball's position is from zero to one second and then from two to four seconds. So for zero to one, we need to chain, find the change in distance. Change in anything is always final minus initial, so x final minus x initial. So the x final for C for zero to one second, so at one second it was at position zero minus and then at the initial, it was at negative four. Subtracting a minus is the same as adding. So we have a positive four meters for what the change in the ball's position is for C. And then for D, they want us to find the change in the ball's position from two to four seconds. So it'll be the exact same thing. So final, it's at four seconds, which is seven. So seven meters minus the initial, which is two seconds. And at two seconds, it was at three meters. So the change in the position from two to four was also four meters. Now for E and F, they want us to find what the ball's velocity is before reaching the sticky section. The formula for velocity is of course change in distance over change in time. So the sticky section starts right here at zero meters, which is the one second mark. So we wanna find the velocity from zero to one. So the change in the distance from zero to one was what we found up here, which is four meters. So we have four meters, and now we just figured out the time as well, which is one second. So four meters divided by one second is a velocity of four meters per second. So that's the answer for part E. And for part F, they want us to figure out what is the ball's velocity after passing the, the sticky section. The sticky section ends at three meters. So at, from three meters onto seven, and three is um, two seconds. And then to the end, of course, the four seconds is the seven meters. So from two to four, the distance that it went, we also found was four meters again. But this time the time is different because from three to seven was a total of two seconds. So four divided by two seconds gives us 2.5. 
two meters per second. So after the sticky section, it had slowed the ball's velocity in half. And now they want us to figure out what is the acceleration on the sticky section of the track. And we just talked about that it slowed it down. So the acceleration should be a negative value for this. Okay, so last one here, part G, acceleration is equal to the change in the velocity over the change in time. So for the sticky section on the track, we're trying to find the time from one to two seconds, because if we look at the picture again, that's where the, the sticky section is, was zero to ending at three, so one to two seconds. So the change in time will be one second, and you could write that with a final minus the initial if you want, but it's gonna be two seconds minus the initial of one second, so it's obviously two minus one, so one second. That'll be divided by the change in the velocity, which we just found for parts E and F is two minus four, so the total change in the velocity is two seconds, but I will break this up into the final minus the initial just to show it can kind of confuse you a little bit. We started, the final velocity that we had is two meters per second, Initially, we started out at four meters per second. So it is helpful to actually write it out because some students may miss the negative because two minus four gives us a negative two meters per second divided by one second, gives us a acceleration of negative two meters per second squared. Some students, like I said, would miss that because they didn't write it out and they would just do it quickly in their head. Ah, we had four seconds and two seconds. Oh, it's, it's total two and positive, and then they would get it wrong. So here are your answers for all of the question. We have a negative two meters per second squared for the acceleration, and then the change in the distances, the change in the velocities, the data table, and the graph.